The history of the rotary table, like the history of most other pieces of oil field machinery, begins in the factory, where men and heavy machines work together to produce the drilling equipment which you depend on at the rig site. In order to explain the function, working and maintenance of the rotary table in the field, we'll start in the factory with the assembly process to see how a rotary table is constructed and how it works. Let's begin with an overview of the whole table and then break it down into its component parts. This is an independent rotary drive table. Now the only time you're likely to see the table looking like this is when you're rigging up or down and this one has the advantage of being shiny and clean because it's brand new, straight from the factory. But if we were to take a big saw and cut the table in half across the center like this, you could see how it works. A cross section looks pretty complex but basically it's not that difficult. The table is made up of two separate interlocking systems that work a lot like the rear end of your car. The pinion acts as a drive shaft and the gear table and master bushing function like the back wheels of your car. When power is transmitted from the draw works or electrical motor that drives the pinion shaft, it makes the pinion gear turn your main gear. And that turns the gear table, which spins the master bushing that makes everything else go. The rotary's function on the rig is twofold. First, it rotates or spins the drill pipe, which in turn causes the drill bit to rotate when you're making hole. Second, it bears the whole weight of the drill string when you're tripping. This means that both the pinion cartridge and the gear table assembly must be very strong to be able to bear immense loads. Dead load, or the amount of weight of the drill string that the table will have to support when you're tripping and rotating load, which is the amount of torsional load required for rotating the drill, string, and bit. Precision construction and proper maintenance are two factors which enable the rotary table to perform these essential functions on the rig. Let's look first at the table's construction. Then, when you know how it's put together, you will better understand what kinds of trouble are likely to occur unless you regularly give the table the right kind of care. This is the pinion shaft cartridge. At the top is the pinion shaft. Surrounding this shaft is the spacer. It protects the pinion shaft from wear. The pinion, of course, is always turning, as are the pinion bearings. Both are lubricated by oil from the main oil reservoir. Oil passes through this trough, lubricating the spherical roller bearings and the quickly rotating pinion shaft. Now, if any mud or foreign particles were to get into this oil, these bearings would be ruined in no time flat. So to protect these sensitive parts, two oil seals are located in the end plate which, as you can see from the cross section, seals off the pinion shaft from the drive mechanism. Together they make a double protective seal, but the effectiveness of these seals depends on you. They will work only if you remember to lubricate them once a day. This is done by means of a grease fitting in the end plate. When you pump grease into the fitting, it is forced through these holes and between the two seals. The grease flushes any mud away from the seal and prevents wear and damage, especially to the bearings and the powerful pinion gear. Now, before tackling the other half of the rotary table, that is the main gear and gear table, 
Let's stop for a moment and review what is most important about the pinion and its lubrication system. The pinion assembly is a very important part of your rotary table. It needs daily oil and lubrication to keep it functioning properly. Let's go out to the rig and see why. There's not a whole lot you can do to ruin a rotary table. But forgetting to check the oil level daily is probably the primary one. And forgetting to grease the pinion shaft oil seals is likely to be number two. However, that's not what this man is doing. He is greasing the table lock, which is good maintenance, but not quite all that's necessary. If you're a new hand on the rig, and with this drilling boom, the majority of oil field personnel are new at their positions, you may need to ask somebody where the pinion shaft seals are located. In this case, the floor hand thought he'd done a pretty good job of policing up the rotary table area and doing the daily maintenance. And in most respects, it was true. He had cleaned the mud off the table, checked the oil level, greased the table lock, but he hadn't greased the pinion shaft seals. They were hidden under the tar paper matting. When the drilling supervisor removed it, the floor hand could see that the grease fitting for the pinion shaft seals was covered by this hinged plate, which covers the gap between the end of the table frame and the rotary guard. The plate serves to prevent mud or tools from falling into the cellar. But it shouldn't prevent you from greasing the pinion shaft seals. The grease fitting is located on the end plate, which, as you can see, is at the end of the pinion assembly. You should grease it once a day. While you're there, you can do some preventative maintenance that may save you a lot of trouble and your company a lot of expense. One of the most common maintenance problems and one which can lead to serious repairs is caused by the rotary drive chain guard filling up with contaminated lubricant. In other words, if you're not careful, mud will seep into the oil which is lubricating the pinion shaft. This occurs when the mud, which falls down into this gap, is allowed to remain there. So wash it out as best you can. And then check the pleated rubber diaphragm, which protects the seals and pinion shaft. The rotary table tends to move quite a bit when the drilling gets heavy. So to allow for this movement, there is a pleated rubber diaphragm which permits a flexible connection between the chain guard and the rotary table. If this rubber flex shield is slashed or damaged in any way, the mud, which is seeped down into the chain guard, will start wearing away the drive chain and the pinion shaft seals. Mud, you know, is very corrosive, so unless you do the proper preventative maintenance, such as greasing the pinion shaft seals, washing the mud out, and checking the rubber flex shield for cuts or gashes, mud will eventually eat through the seals and start to work on the pinion bearings. Remember, the bearings will be ruined if the mud gets into them. They'll be the first thing to go because they operate at a very high speed. But, if the situation continues, the main bearing will follow, and then backlash will destroy the gears, and you may have to replace the whole shooting match. How can you avoid this mess? By regular, daily, and monthly maintenance. And if any mud has gotten into the table, you can get rid of it by draining the rotary table once every 90 days. Simply remove the drain plug located here at the bottom of the oil reservoir, Allow the oil to drain out, rinse the rotary table with clean water, and refill it with clean oil. This should be part of your regular maintenance program. The key is to be careful. Even if you do a bang-up job on everything else, forgetting one small part of your monthly or daily maintenance, such as forgetting to grease the pinion shaft seals, could cause real havoc with the machinery. 
not to mention the trouble caused by lost time, major repair bills, and your employer's resulting discontent. By now, you should have a fairly clear idea of the pinion assembly and how it works. So let's go back to the factory and look at the way the other half of the rotary table is put together. The gears and gear table which transmit the power from the pinion shaft to the master bushing and Kelly bushing that turn the bit. Like the pinion, the gear assembly is put together first and then mounted in the table only when it is complete. As you can see here, when they assemble it in the factory, it's put together upside down. Then, when it's complete, they turn it over like this and lower it into the table. Let's look first at the gear table's construction. Then, when you know how it's put together, we'll come back to the rig floor to see just what kind of maintenance you'll have to do to keep it in good shape. Starting from the outside, the first thing you should be familiar with are the labyrinth seals. These are located between the top body cover and the main base. They are deep grooves which, with a little help from you, effectively keep mud and water out of the oil reservoir and thus protect the vital inner workings. Next comes the spiral bevel main gear. The important thing for you to notice is just how close it sits to the labyrinth seals, right next to them. So that any mud or water which gets under the table cover and past these seals will begin to corrode the main gear at once. We'll show you just how this happens when we get to the maintenance section. If we go back to the gear table's construction, the main gear is shrunk fit onto the shoulder here of the table itself. And then the main bearing is put into place. What's especially important about the main bearing is its load bearing capacity. Not only must it withstand downward or compressive loading from the weight of the drill string, but it also must bear radial or side loading from the outward centrifugal force caused by the quickly spinning rotary and by any misalignment of the blocks, pipes, or derrick over the hole. Now for probably 90% of the time, this main bearing handles all the loading. But sometimes when you're drilling, the load is erratic. And, for instance, if you hit a hard formation, the bit may bounce off the bottom, causing a hard shock to run back up through the drill string and rotary table. The main bearing is positioned to absorb downward and radial loading, but not this upward shock. So to prevent damage to the rotary table, another bearing, called an upthrust bearing, is positioned next to the main bearing. Its function is to absorb this upward shock. However, it must be heated in order to get it to expand over the shoulder of the gear table. This is a very delicate process because heating the bearing too much or too quickly would ruin the tempered, heat-treated surface and cause it to fail sooner than need be. When the upthrust bearing is snugly fitted between the inner and outer race, then shims are added. These allow for sufficient running clearance between the main bearing, the upthrust bearing, and the table itself. If there aren't enough shims, the bearings won't have any running clearance. To test for clearance, the shims and the outer surface of the gear table are both coated with a lubricant before a bearing retainer is lowered into position. Once the bearing retainer is in position, they run the clearance test with a magnetic dial and indicator. The table is lifted, which pulls all its weight up against the bearings. And then the amount of clearance is read on the indicators. If the bearings have sufficient clearance, then the gear table assembly is complete. And all that remains is to fit the pinion cartridge and gear assembly into the table frame. 
the frame bore where the cartridge rests and the table frame are both lubricated. And then the pinion cartridge is cradled until it fits. Then a micrometer is used to check whether the pinion cartridge is in the correct position so that once it's right, then the shims which position the pinion gear in relation to the main gear can be added and the main gear lowered into place. If there's either too much or too little space between the teeth of the main gear and those of the pinion gear, the gears won't mesh smoothly and the gear tooth profile will be quickly destroyed. At this point, you should be familiar with the rotary table's construction. Now, if we return to the rig floor, we can talk about maintenance procedures by which you can keep these gears turning to the right. Let's go through a thorough cleanup and treat the problem areas one by one. Mud's your worst enemy on the rig. Its abrasion causes wear and gets into all the machinery, especially your rotary table. So the first line of defense in a preventative maintenance program is going to be keeping that mud out of the table. That means washing it down after you finish tripping and before you start the table up. If you don't, let's look at what could happen. This rig had begun to have problems with its rotary table. When we got out on the floor, the table didn't look all that dirty. However, as soon as the four bolts that hold the rotary table cover in place were removed and the cover was lifted off, it was a different story. Mud had worked its way beneath the table frame and spread over all the parts. The pinion shaft was totally covered with mud, which had to be pried up before it would come loose. Here, by the table lock, Mud had gummed up the mechanism from beneath. And even worse, mud had begun to work its way up over the labyrinth seals and into the interior of the table. How can mud get through the labyrinth seals? Let's back up a moment and see. As you know, there's a small gap between the gear table and the table cover so that the gear table can turn while the cover always remains stationary. If you're not real careful to keep the table clean, especially when you're tripping, mud will get through this gap. Now, as long as you remember to wash the rotary table down regularly and remove the table cover once a month to get rid of any built-up accumulation of mud, you'll be okay. But if you let it get like this, let's look at a cross-section and see what's really happening. The mud under the cover has built up so far that it's much taller or higher than even the highest of the labyrinth seals. Now when water flows into the gap between the table cover and the gear table, it always tries to seek its own level. There's nowhere for it to go with all that mud built up. So it flows up and over the labyrinth seals and into the main gear. But that's not all. As you can see here from the clean factory model, mud doesn't have to go very far to seep from the table lock and labyrinth seals into the pinion gear. If it's allowed to remain here, it will ruin the table in very short order. You can avoid such problems by changing the table's oil every 90 days and by removing the table cover once a month to hose away all the mud. Be sure to direct the spray down away from the labyrinth seals so you don't get mud inside the table. And when you're done, it should look like this. How can you keep your rotary table turning to the right? By now, you must know that it's a matter of monthly and daily maintenance. If you'll check the oil level once a day, grease the table lock, and lubricate the pinion shaft seals as a part of your daily maintenance procedures, the rotary table will give you consistent, reliable service as long as you keep it clean.